This is lithium oxalate. One of the key ingredients to the sustainable energy industry, as well as mobile phones, laptops, power tools, pacemakers, mental health medications, and robot vacuums. This is actually stevia in the raw. I'm not a doctor, but I don't think it's advisable to eat lithium oxalate. Lithium is the third element on the periodic table and one of the three elements that cosmologists say was dropped by the Big Bang. There's a lot of it in the universe. But the International Energy Agency has been predicting a shortage of it by the year 2025. That's next year. We will discuss how that's possible. But what if I told you that a brand new AI innovation found a way to cut lithium demand by 70%? That's right, this is not a doom bait video. Today, we're gonna talk about machine learning innovations that are groundbreaking for the mining industry, and by proxy, also for tech and EVs. And in honor of the Sora news that a lot of other YouTube channels have covered very well, I decided to let AI sources make a lot of the B-roll for this video. All of the AI tools I use are open source and available for anyone to use. I'm curious to see if anyone in the comments can identify all of the AI clips. Imagine a room full of McKinsey data scientists wearing expensive suits standing apprehensively next to mining engineers in hard hats and jumpsuits, and metallurgists still covered in shards of scrap. Nobody can speak as they wait to see if they cause potentially irreversible problems at the Freeport McMoran copper mill. Three years of operating data from the mill was loaded into a custom AI model. One of the data scientists crosses his fingers on both his hands inside his pockets, hoping the mill will be able to boost outputs without rattling apart. The model predicted that the mill could handle more ore than operators thought, but of course there exists the risk that the model could be wrong. A casually dressed executive enters the room and gives them the permission they've all been waiting for. They can now turn up the pace of the mill as the model suggested. Mining and crushing activities commence. Conveyor belts carry chunks of ore from the crusher to the stockpile and from the stockpile to the mill. A dozen oversized computer monitors in the control room are armed with performance sensors that flash readings nobody can believe. Normal readings. And one by one, the team feels safe enough to exhale. The process works for 12 full hours. And then weeks go by, with the mill continuing at a faster pace with no loss of efficiency and no breakdowns. The AI model was right. Mining prospectors had first staked their claims in Baghdad, Arizona, way back in 1882, and the executives thought it had gotten as efficient as it could with the existing vintage equipment. They were planning for a $200 million capital expansion that could boost production, but <laughs> copper prices crashed. All of a sudden, the investment no longer made sense. The only alternative they saw was this AI model. No matter how big the company is, the small victories count in the long run. And this was no small victory. This was bigger. The model taught them how to be more receptive to ideas that they never would have thought of before. It was more than just sophisticated data science. Optimizing the Baghdad mill required a new approach to solving tricky operational problems. Here's what stuck out to me about this model. They applied the law of close enoughness. They started using the model when it was about 60% correct instead of waiting for it to be perfect first. That's extremely bold and pretty freaking cool. They described this model as an extreme gradient boosting model composed of several thousand decision trees that were engineered to involve input from the metallurgists. Okay, so decision trees are supervised machine learning algorithms. They literally look like an upside down tree. Decision trees categorize the importance of things. So this branch is more important to the model than 
this branch. Extreme Gradient Boosting or XG Boost is an adaptation of decision trees that's especially good at optimization problems and linear programming. Like for example, how fast do we run our mill to maximize profits? Now let's leave the United States and head to Chile. Come with me as I show you around this giant salty flatland that was once a lake about two and a half million years ago. Today they call it the Lithium Triangle. A supervisor watches as a bunch of water is pumped into the salty desert wasteland. He walks around to the other pools of salty sludge. As the water evaporates, it leaves behind a white powder called lithium oxalate and a whole bunch of toxic waste. This is how lithium is made. It's a process called brine mining. How much land do you think this is? And how long do you think it takes for the sun to evaporate all the water out of this gross looking science experiment? As the world's demand for lithium grows, Albemarle has ramped up their production. They're trying their best to fight against an ever impending lithium shortage. They haven't been able to mine the stuff fast enough to keep up with demand and pumping water into desert pools isn't exactly economically efficient. But a new AI might have changed all that. As a cooperative effort with Microsoft, the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory used AI and a quantum computer to feed 32 million combinations of chemistry crap through an algorithm. And the AI discovered a new solid state electrolyte that could cut our need for lithium by 70%. <laughs> yeah. For those of you, including myself, who aren't chemists, electrolytes are substances that naturally have a positive or negative charge, which is why they're used in batteries. This new material is actually also predicted to improve the safety of lithium batteries by reducing the risk of them bursting into flames. <laughs> now, I actually own a product manufactured by Elon Musk that has this bursting into flames feature. <laughs> Did you think I was going to show you the same driverless Tesla footage for a third video in a row? So the AI and supercomputer duo arrived at this answer to the global lithium shortage problem after about nine months, actually. And this is probably about 20 years sooner than it would have taken just doing regular scientific research the normal way. So the substance is being called N2116 for now, and here it is powering a light bulb. Now there isn't a peer reviewed paper about this out yet. I'm expecting to see one soon. They're keeping the algorithm proprietary for now, which to be honest is understandable. With an innovation of this importance and significance, I, I get it. I'm not a lawyer, but I can see why they would want to secure their AI before they release it to the world. Even though we don't know what the AI is, no harm in speculating, right? It's an optimization problem, just like the freeport McMoran mill. And since a quantum computer is involved, we know that they're working with a binary data set. Binary data is processed in bits. A bit can only be a zero or a one. I would expect it to be some sort of a supervised machine learning algorithm. There are a lot of tree-based and non-tree-based algorithms of this type. Um, it's hard to say which one it would be, and I, I don't know that it really matters, but that's the best way to deal with discrete data without be it being extremely computationally expensive, which might not be a factor if you're dealing with a quantum computer. Now, if you're a publicly traded international mining conglomerate, you can afford to pay an entire team of data scientists several hundred thousand dollars to work on problems like this. But if you're a smaller company, you don't have that kind of cash. This is actually one of the reasons why I created this YouTube channel. I wanted to find a way to help smaller businesses and nonprofits access the same tools to compete with the larger businesses. I don't have access to a quantum computer but I do know how to code and I live in New Mexico. This state is a gold mine <laughs> for scientific and engineering talent with two national laboratories located right here below. Did you hear that? 
Those are robot sounds. Here's where I get to talk to you about how machine learning can help smaller businesses. For this, we have to leave Chile and go to the frozen north of Saskatchewan, Canada. Arguably, I saved the best for last, you guys. A brave robot makes his way down a long channel of basement rock deep under a thick layer of sandstone. His destination is a deposit of highly radioactive uranium ore sandwiched deep between the two layers of rock. In order to make it safer for the little guy, an AI model ensures the ground around the uranium is frozen so that the mine is stable. Since it's northern Canada, this part isn't too hard. Cameco calls this robot a jet boring system. But I like to call him Ted. Ted bravely sticks his arm up into the pocket of uranium ore and flings highly pressurized water around in a circle at a boot 1600 kilometers per hour inside the uranium ore to make a cavity. For the bootlickers down south, that's 994 miles per hour. A. Eh? It's fast enough for water to cut through and pulverize the highly radioactive material. Ted sends the broken ore and radioactive water away from the cavity and up to the surface in special steel pipes like so. For a moment, the radioactive ground above Ted is unstable. But now, he backfills the cavity with concrete and moves into position to drill the next radioactive cavity. It's a lonely, cold life. But Ted doesn't mind. In fact, Ted was built for this. Okay, so frankly, it's a fact that any business using artificial intelligence or machine learning gets a much higher valuation from investors. And I wanna make those tools more readily available. ChatGPT can do a lot of stuff for a lot of people, but you need at least a basic understanding of the field of linear programming in order to solve optimization problems like the ones I covered in the examples in this video. Now, optimization is, in my opinion, the single most crucial thing that you can use AI for in business. And there are a lot of different ways to approach every optimization research problem, depending on what the research question is. It could be as simple as just using a linear regression model or as complex as using gradient descent or building an entire neural net. In order to remain competitive, small businesses need this stuff. And it's usually just way too too expensive to hire a data scientist for $200,000 to make it for them. Luckily, I have criminally inexpensive options available for anyone who goes to my website and fills out a contact form saying that they found me on YouTube. Uh, and that deal will probably be in place for quite a long time because I'm trying to build this channel. Right now, this channel makes me no money. <laughs> but at some point, I'd like to see it grow so that I can do cool things like attract sponsored grants for small businesses and nonprofits to have access to things like AI and machine learning tools for robots or algorithms or even just software. I don't know how long it'll take me to grow into this mission, but I'm blessed to be at a point in my life where I'm financially stable enough that I can undertake this. One thing you could do to help me realize this goal is just simply subscribe. Thank you for doing that.